Beloved in Christ, the Lord be with you. I welcome you to my reflection for the solemnity of all saints. And the theme of my reflection is the present of the saints, a glorious future. The present of the saints, a glorious future. As we celebrate all the saints today, both canonized and non-canonized, we prefigure the celebration in heaven. Today's feast reminds us of the continuity and unity between the pilgrim church on earth and the triumphant church in heaven. The solemnity of all saints is for each and every one of us an invitation and a reminder to the call to holiness of life, which is the vocation of all the baptized. Our Eucharistic celebration today begins with the invitation to joy in the entrance antiphon, which the church as mother and teacher directs to all of us thus. Let us rejoice in the Lord as we celebrate the fixed day in honor of all the saints at whose festival the angels rejoice and praise the Son of God. In today's first reading from the book of Revelation chapter 2, chapter 7 rather, from verse 2 to 4, and again from verse 9 to 14, John recounts a vision he received about that heavenly celebration of the saints. The words of the book of Revelation in chapter 7 from verse 9 to 10 are illuminating, they are enlightening. I saw a huge number, impossible to count, of people from every nation, race, tribe, and language. They were standing in front of the Lamb, dressed in white robes, and holding palms in their hands. They shouted aloud, Victory to our God, who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb. And he was equally told why they are in heaven. These are the people who have been through the great persecution, and they have washed their robes white again in the blood of the Lamb, as we see in Revelation chapter 7, verse 14. The saints in heaven were faithful to God despite the many hardships and persecutions they had to endure. Little wonder they have been crowned and graced with white robes. The saints won victory over trials and tribulations through their collaboration with the grace of God. St. Paul captured the efficacy of divine grace when he opined that what I am now, I am through the grace of God, as in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 10. Furthermore, many a times we are confronted with the question, why do we pray through the saints? We pray through the saints because they can help us on our sojourn towards heaven, because they are already there. John saw an earlier vision where he narrated that he saw golden barrels full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints, as we see in the book of Revelation, chapter 5, verse 8. So they can intercede for us, and they do intercede for us. The prayers of the saints are powerful. A profound reflection, a profound reflection on the gospel passage from the gospel according to Matthew, chapter 5, from verse 1 to 12, reveals that the saints are men and women of beatitudes. Little wonder the heart of today's gospel, the word blessed, was repeated for nine good times. The Beatitudes are proclaimed by Jesus in a fascinating way. The choice of the mount by Matthew for this sermon is in line with his conception of these sets of teachings as the new law, which corresponds with the old law given by Moses on Mount Sinai. For Matthew, Jesus is the new law giver, the second Moses. Though, for Luke, the sermon took place on the plain. Indeed, it has been often observed that the Beatitudes described the life of Christ himself, and as such, in connection to all saints. It denotes that all saints are those who manifested a Christ-like character as expressed in the Beatitudes. Be that as it may, the road to sanctity or holiness is the road of the Beatitudes. Spiritual poverty or humility and detachment from the things of this world, meekness and the re rejection of every violence, bearing pains, thirst for justice, comprehension and mercy towards one's neighbor, purity of heart, spirit of peace, are the roots to holiness. And the saints we are celebrating today teach us by their exemplary life that it is a root that can be plied by all. However, we may ask a pertinent question thus, why are these categories of people proclaimed blessed by Jesus? Not because to them Jesus assured sources and wealth, 
that they are blessed because the good news of God's kingdom has been announced to them and they were disposed to welcome it. From here springs joy, happiness, and blessedness. We too can be called blessed if we welcome the good news and all that it comports. For by so doing, we will be on the road to holiness. Interestingly, the second reading from the first letter of St. John, chapter 3, from verse 1 to 3, invites us to aspire to be where the saints are, so that their present can become our future. He reminds us that heaven is our destination, and this is the first message emanating from this passage that we have to take to heart. We are God's children, but what we shall be in the future has not yet been revealed. We are well aware that when he appears, we shall be like him because we shall see him as he really is. As such, St. John enjoins us, surely everyone who entertains this hope must purify himself, must try to be as pure as Christ, as we see in 1 John chapter 3, verse 3. Above all else, however, with the solemnity of all saints, the church draws our attention to few paramount messages. First, that heaven is our destination. As St. John said, Beloved, we are now children of God, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be, but we know that when he is revealed, we shall see him as he is, as in 1 John chapter 3, verse 2. Analogically, St. Paul expresses that, For now, we see in a mirror, dimly, but then, face to face as in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 12. Really, the saints are beholding God face to face, and we hope to do so in the future, like them. The second message comes from the first reading, the fact that we are all called to holiness. St. Peter frames this when he vehemently posited, this is the will of God, your sanctification, as we see in 1 Peter chapter 1, from verse 15 to 16. The conciliar document of Vatican II reminds us equally of this universal call to holiness in Lumen Gentium No. 40. We are not called to an exceptional holiness, rather, we are all called to essential holiness. Let us pray that the saints may continue to intercede for us on our journey of perfectibility as we journey to be where they are, so that we, may, we too will be, become partakers of the saints in light. And may the saints continue to intercede for us. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.